welcome back to Fully Charged. I'm Maddie. Hey, I'm Greg. And we've been thinking about food. <laughs> yeah, not a rare thing for us, to be honest. <laughs> How often do you actually think about where your food has come from? As in, where was it grown? How far has it traveled? Actually, how many miles has it traveled to get to you? Because if we want to be reducing our footprint on the planet, if we want to all be helping chuck less carbon up into the atmosphere, should we be thinking about our food miles and should we be trying to reduce them? Over the next few weeks, we're going to be making this video to find out more. Uh, we've just gone for our daily walk and we need to do a weekly food job. rules I'm going to go in and do the weekly food shop alone. Mm -hmm. uh, for this video we're just going to focus on fresh fruit and vegetables so I'll see what options are available um, and then I'll pick the ones with the lowest food miles yep. and I'll show you what we've got back at home after we've washed our hands. Okay. <laughs> And the things that were most obvious, so what there were most of, I found more, more often than not came from abroad, so it came from European countries or further afield. Yeah. But the joy of the supermarket was that they do give you lots of options. How about some strawberries? The strawberries that were most obvious, the ones that there were the most of, that were covering Genius. the most amount of stands and were cheaper, were the super sweet strawberries that they were coming from Spain. Okay. So first of all, I saw those and I was like, oh great, you know, massive pack, value strawberries, brilliant, comes from Spain, that's okay, it's Europe. But then after a bit of digging around, I found the British strawberries. So lower food miles with these strawberries. Uh, next up, what about um, blackberries? A similar situation though with the strawberries, again, it's another berry, it's a soft fruit, is that when I first saw the blackberries, um, the majority of them were coming from Mexico. So originally mm. I was like, oh, no blackberries for us, can't be, can't be getting those, but then I found the British blackberries, so I could get those ones. Less food miles. Mm. Tomatoes. Tomatoes, again, British tomatoes, it mm. says on it. Tomatoes come from all over the place, from Morocco, Tunisia, the Netherlands, and finally I found some from the UK. Okay. So the last two things I've got in my bag are things that are truly local to us, what I would consider to be local. Okay. Okay, uh, first one, mushrooms. <laughs> Interestingly, most come from Poland, or were, came from Poland really? in this supermarket. This is from Cambridgeshire, yeah. which is where we live. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, and then lastly, all the potatoes were coming from the UK, I would say. Um, but these, this is the only variety that seemed to come from at least the east of England. Uh, Norfolk Keepers. They're keepers. They are. So from looking at the country of origin labels, we know where they come from. But one thing we don't know is how they've got to us. I mean, I can assume that the stuff that is coming from farms within the, within the UK, that's going to be arriving by truck yeah. somehow. Yeah. Um, but when things are coming from further afield, such as Spain or the Netherlands. Or, or Mexico. Or even the Dominican Republic. California. You know, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's coming by a ship or if it's coming by air, no idea. And I assume that coming by air mm. is going to be much, much worse than coming by ship. I would assume that. Shall I go do some research? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, what have you found out? Uh, so we were right. So this paper here says that for produce flown in by aeroplane to the UK, uh, that can increase its CO2 equivalent emissions by 10 times wow. compared to if it's grown locally or imported by a ship. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So what sort of stuff is air freighted to us? So you know those berries yeah. that you found, like mm -hmm. the Mexican berries? Yeah. Things that have a short shelf life that are really f that need to be really fresh when they get to us. Uh, mm. All right then. So what about the other modes of transport? Uh, right, okay, this report was prepared for DEFRA, okay, it's in 2005, but this is the CO2 emissions associated with UK food transport. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, air is only 1% of all the miles, mm -hmm. but it accounts for 11% of the emissions. Whoa, mm. okay. But the biggest piece of the pie is HGVs. 
and actually a third of the CO2 emissions associated with UK food transport are HGV within the UK. So flying is worse, but the highest percentage comes from HGVs? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, hang on, what about shipping? Shipping, uh, right, this is um, the Mayor's Food Strategy, London Mayor, 2006, uh, and this says, shipping is one of the best options since road transport generates six times more CO2 and air freight 50 times more. So oh my goodness. So saying that shipping is the best form. Although this is just talking about CO2, uh, they, shipping uses dirty fuel, so it chucks out nitrogen and sulphur, which can have a bigger impact than CO2. So actually the only way we can reduce our food miles yeah. is to purchase our fruit and veg locally. Yes. In which case, let's move on from the supermarket and see if we can get some kind of local fruit or veg box and see if that improves the situation. Local food delivery Cambridgeshire, I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> Our local fruit and veg box has arrived and I have to say on first glance it is an absolute feast for the eyes. It looks incredible, the presentation is amazing. We have got blueberries, grapes, bananas, pears, so much fruit and veg. However, when you look a little bit closer into the box it starts to raise some questions. Avocado. <laughs> Um, what else? I don't think that's local. No. Uh, mango? Mango? Um, Bananas. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that says Columbia. I mean, don't get me wrong. Look at these grapes. They look delicious, but they certainly didn't come from anywhere near us. I, I, I don't want to be this cynical, mm. but what if actually that came in plastic? That's, I'm thinking and exactly the same thing. And it was taken out of the plastic to go into the box. Has any of this come from the UK? Well, the problem is, it, it's a massive task to try to find out where it's come from. Yeah. And therefore to calculate its food miles. Yeah. It's, you know, it's impossible. What about this, Greg? This is a Granny Smith apple. Yeah. A Granny Smith apple. And grow in the garden. Yeah. Like, that, to me, is, is, is very British. I would have no... I wouldn't question that this could be locally grown however the sticker says Ooh. castang they're french okay east so. of bordeaux so that's likely been grown in france i think a lot of this presentation here is all about making us feel worthy there is also a bit of error on our part though because we just went online and we looked for a local fruit and veg company yeah we didn't actually check whether that fruit and veg company was getting its produce locally so what so, i think we need to do is when we've eaten all this, mm. we need to order another box, mm -hmm. but this time make sure it's not just a box provided locally and delivered yeah. to your doorstep, it's actually grown locally. Yeah, no more Italian kiwis. Well, I'm well. going to enjoy that now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll give everything a rinse. I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm rolling because this one's just being eaten the grapes and you're loving them. Mm -hmm. I'm them. <laughs> Hello, it is about a week later since we last spoke to you and Greg has just returned from picking up the second fruit and veg box. Uh, this is our temporary Renault Zoe by the way. How was it? It's good. Yeah, it does. That's Had to go and pick better. it up. It was a miscellaneous white refrigerated van on a back street. <laughs> <laughs> that um, doesn't good though. So here's the thing. That first box that we got was actually delivered to our front door um, as part of a local delivery round. Yeah. And one expert stuff I was reading said that that can reduce the food footprint by about half a percent. That's not to be sniffed at. Mm, it all adds up. Yeah. And, but those last food miles for me were done in the electric vehicle, so I think that's kind of negligible. Yeah, I think picking it up in the EV is fine. Um, some other stuff we've been reading as well actually means that we've got some good news and some pretty bad news. Yeah, but let's get this unboxed and see what we've got. Yeah. Yeah? Right. Let's start with the bad news. So that DEFRA report that I showed you before, that actually says that a tomato grown in the UK could have three times the carbon footprint of a tomato grown in Spain. 
What? It's famous further away. And we found another paper that suggests, despite the food miles, that in the summer it could be better to import an apple all the way from New Zealand rather than grow one in the UK. Yeah. So there's an open access book called Climate Smart Food. It's published by a climate scientist from the University of Edinburgh called Dr David Rear, and uh, it's quoted in newspaper articles and magazine features and loads of papers as well. Mm. Now, sadly, I haven't read the whole thing yet, um, <laughs> so I haven't had the chance, um, but apparently it says that oranges that have been shipped from Brazil to the UK right. can have a smaller carbon footprint than oranges that have come from the Mediterranean. Wow. And bananas that have been imported from the Dominican Republic could actually be some of the most carbon friendly foods we could consume here in the UK. So I know what you're thinking, what is going on? And this is the bad news because perhaps it would have been better for us to have got our tomatoes from Spain, our apples from New Zealand, bananas from Dominican and oranges all the way from Brazil. Mm. Surely the journeys alone like the, the carbon footprint must be enormous. So here's the thing. We have been focused, obsessed with food miles, right? We haven't stopped and stepped back and looked mm. at the whole picture and thought about what is everything that contributes to a food's total greenhouse gas emissions. So we're talking things like fuel needed for vehicles and heating and powering buildings like industrial scale greenhouses. There's also the emissions from fertilizers, pesticides and then land use converting the land to be able to grow crops some foodstuffs require those crops to actually feed them you've also got methane production the list goes on yeah and you've got to think about the rest of the supply chain too because no matter the origin of the food mm -hmm. you've still got the uh, the processing the packing and the retail as well turns out if you add all this up the transport of the food that bit the food miles bit actually only counts for around six percent of the food's total greenhouse gas emissions. 6% of its life cycle footprint of the food. Only 6%, that is nothing. So really what we need to be thinking about is how our food is grown yeah. and when it was grown, because both of those things are going to play a much bigger part in the overall total carbon footprint of our food than food miles, 6%. Yeah. So think about that tomato grown in Spain versus UK. Uh, that is if that UK tomato has been grown in a heated greenhouse, mm -hmm. right? Loads of energy for that. Yeah, uh, food may have been refrigerated for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. So take apples, they tend to be picked in the autumn um, here in the UK. That means if you're buying apples in the summer, they might have been refrigerated for a really, really long time. Yeah, focusing on food miles can paint a quite inaccurate picture, right? Yeah. You need to focus on food footprint yeah right. eating locally is not necessarily the best for our whole carbon footprint no but if you can eat both locally and seasonally now you're talking which is where this you know fruit and veg box comes in let's have a look what we got in it okay we've got lots of green leafy veg oh, we've got some herbs so this company actually, uh, well I say company, it's a farm, it's a local farm. They normally provide uh, this sort of stuff to restaurants, but because of COVID and all the restaurants being closed, are they beans? I don't know. They look great. Um, what they're doing instead is they're providing that, that produce, that surplus produce to people who wanna sign up online and buy it. Which is brilliant news for us, spring onions. Also, wow, look how colorful they are. Oh, nice, rainbow chart maybe? Well, this is great because we're certainly eating foods that we never would have um, usually eaten, which is lovely. And I chatted to the guy and he said that um, they don't have any heated greenhouses. They grow it either outside in lots of fields uh, or they use reclaimed plastic polytunnels, mm -hmm. but they're not heated. So. Right. So they're only growing food that they know that can withstand uh, the season, which is brilliant. Everything in here is green and lovely and it smells wonderful. But where are the potatoes? I can help with that. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I'm very excited to show you something. Bear with, bear with. I would love to introduce you to Moat Nurseries. Down here I've got uh, two different varieties of potatoes growing in bags. Back here we've got uh, beans growing on canes. I'm very new to this by the way. Not naturally green fingered. Um, and down here these girls came out for a bit of a sunbathe earlier on. I've got some cherry tomatoes tomatoes, giant pumpkins, because why not? 
<laughs> but I, I can't have a tomato or a potato tonight, can I, for dinner? No, 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 it's going to be a few months before you can have those. And there's the rub. Yeah, which which is completely fair. You know, it's really nice to have a box of fresh veg in the kitchen or, you know, be growing our own stuff outside. But it's not going to sustain us, is it? No. So we are going to still need, in addition to keeping up yeah. that local seasonal box, which I think is great, we're mm -hmm. going to need still to go to the shop and buy stuff. Because what we need to know is where were they grown, how were they grown and how did they get to us? Yeah, so just a simple la label telling you the... Carbon one. footprint yeah. or a little logo or... Why don't people do that? So... I think I was reading in 2007, Tesco were thinking of putting the um, total greenhouse gas emissions, the carbon footprint of, of stuff on the foods. They should do that. But do they that. didn't because they realised it was going to be a massive amount of work to try to calculate it. Oh, that's such a shame. And corn, uh, we're going to try this year to launch this, but I'm sure with COVID it's been, it's been pushed. But It would make on. decision making a lot simpler. Personally, we've decided that we're going to avoid buying air freighted foods mm -hmm. um, if we know and we can tell. Mm -hmm. But it's not as simple as that because if we think back to the berries that I bought right at the beginning of this video from the supermarket, I decided to get the ones from the UK, right? Yeah. But actually, berries aren't seasonal here, so chances are they were grown in heated greenhouses. So it might have been better to have, you know, to have gotten the ones from Spain. So seasonal is the key. Yes. But it's not. Yeah, it, it's not seasonal here, it's where it's grown, it needs to be seasonal because right. then it doesn't need that massive energy input. Exactly, right? so to, to grow it. We ditch air freighted stuff and we buy produce that is being grown where it is seasonal. Yes, which is why we are going to keep buying bananas. Apparently one of the most carbon friendly foods. Apparently so, mm. so there you have it. Oh, there is an elephant in the room that we haven't touched on and that is food waste. Mm. Globally, one third of wonderful nutritious food gets thrown away mm. right and it gets thrown away and firstly all that energy that's gone into its production is completely wasted yeah. uh, and secondly it will decompose and that will produce loads more greenhouse gases and that really is a big problem and a, a story for another video that's a, that's a biggie <laughs> Uh, so we really hope you've enjoyed coming on this food miles journey with us. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, if you have been, thanks for watching and I'm sure we'll see you soon on Fully Charged. Bye! Bye. You've still got to think about processing, packing and then retail. Yeah my line yeah oh, i know what it is yeah i know what it is okay oh well let's do it again do it again